James chapter 4 verses 11 onwards Don't criticize one another brothers and sisters anyone who defames or judges a fellow believer defames and judges the law if you judge the law you are not a doer of the law but a judge there is one lawgiver and judge who is able to save and to destroy but who are you to judge your neighbor come now you who said today or tomorrow we will travel to such and such a city and spend a year there and do business and make a profit yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring what your life will be for you are like vapor that appears for a little while then vanishes instead you should say if the lord wills we will live and do this or that but as it is you boast in your arrogance all such boasting is evil so it is sin to know the good and yet not do it let's thank the lord for the word amen can we lift up our hands and thank for god for the scriptures amen amen you only be seated please once again i greet you all in the precious name of our lord and savior jesus christ this morning that god has given us one more opportunity to be in his presence and uh, this morning um whenever we read the word we should be thankful because we have been given access to god's word like never before amen uh, sometimes when i read the word i just thank the lord that you know we live in times where we have access to the lord's word um another thing we need to be thankful is the fact that we have the freedom to come and praise god we have the freedom to praise god yesterday i shared a mission report from uh, one of the mission stations we support as a church and uh, some of you might have read it um, and it basically has report which says that uh, people came and stopped a service as it was going on and asked them never to conduct a service again in that place and uh, they are still negotiating it's not an isolated even there are so many places where people cannot come and uh, praise god together people will come and stop ask them not to praise or have a service and um, i was hearing a story uh, not a story it actually happened somebody was sharing in a country that uh, if the service is at 10 am people will start one by one coming from very early in the morning because they won't come together so that nobody will suspect so they will one person will come maybe at 6 somebody will come at 6:30 slowly they will gather and then they will have a very secret service underground service <laughs> after the service they will leave not together like we do we go out and stand and talk and all these things and then we do they go one by one slowly so that it is uh, doesn't come into the notice of anyone else So there are so many people around the world who struggle and who have difficulty in gathering together to praise God but this morning it's a privilege that we were able to come I think there was a rush after 9:20 when everybody came and uh, we all stand outside we praise God let us thank the Lord for the freedom we experience to come and praise him amen amen praise God I'm so happy about that I just uh, said that as a reminder before i get into the message this morning this morning i want to talk to you about a subject which is called a sin of omission sin of omission um i want to read james chapter 4 verse 17 we just read it i want to read it again it says like this remember it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it so it is sin to know the good and yet not do it see i have mentioned this uh, word many times in my sermon and in my conversations and we all know about it that uh, there are two concepts one is sin of commission and sin of omission today i want to dwell on this topic as uh, the lord had been teaching and uh, helping me to uh, meditate and think more about it and uh, i want to share a few things with you i want to put a foundation and then i want to come and tell you uh, towards the end uh, the, what are the consequences of uh, this issue and uh, uh, i want to last week i said uh, some abbreviation and today i want to ask you to do uh, remember so that you will always remember sc and so repeat after me sc and so so sin of commission and sin of omission okay what is sin of commission it's very simple since that a person actively commits 
sins that a person actively commits. It's a sin of commission. What is sin of omission? A sin of omission is a sin that is a result of not doing something which God's word teaches that we should do. Did you get it? Sin of omission is a sin that is a result of not doing something which the word of God teaches us that we should do. So when I was evaluating my own life, not last week, but for some time, I realized one thing that initially in my Christian walk, probably 100% I focused on the sin of commission. Then I got a little better. I don't think I'm anywhere near where it should be. 95% of the time, if we confess or we ask sorry, or even more than that, what do we ask sorry to the Lord? Something we did. We don't actually think about the things we ignored or we did not do. I don't know about you. I'm telling you the truth from my life. I realized that that's so true in my own life because, you know, if I say something or if I do something which I know I should not be doing, then I am very quick to act on it most of the time, not every time. I'm not a righteous like you, but... <laughs> but a lot of times we ignore what is called as some things we ignore. You know, we, I have a, I, I did a program once in a youth meeting long time ago, not here, but somewhere else. I got an idea. Actually, I think somebody was sharing something and I picked up an idea from that and I developed a, a game. So in this game, what I did is I, I was conducting this program. I called five volunteers and I said, Five volunteers can come forward and what you can do is you can pick five random people from the crowd and ask them to do something. And the rule is that they will have to do it. So five volunteers quickly came forward. Actually, there was a fight for volunteers to come and ask people to do something, right? So one first person came and he picked up uh, somebody who doesn't normally sing and said, this person has to sing a song. And there were like a lot of funny things people asked. And one guy actually came and picked up somebody and said, this person will have to jump and shout hallelujah three times. So there were very interesting five programs, which these five brilliant people came up with. Then I said, wait a minute, let's open up our Bibles. And I said, turn with me to Matthew chapter 7. And I read to them the golden rule. How many of you know the golden rule? Anybody knows the golden rule? Yes. What is the golden rule? It says, do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. This is the essence of all that is taught in the law and the prophets. Do to others what you would like them to do to you. I said, go ahead. Jump three times and hey, hallelujah. And the guy, the person who wanted to sing, I said, you have to sing now. Oh, then they realized that I was, I put them in a trap. <laughs> the reason I shared that is because um, a lot of times uh, we have a lot of expectations from others when we don't measure up to even 50% of that, right? And, uh, and this, this needs to be evaluated in the uh, in, in, in the, in the, in the presence of God and this cannot be easily done. Um, but sometimes we have to really humble ourselves and say to the Lord, Lord, show me, show me. I, like David prayed, you have to pray, Lord, show me what is, what are the things. And you have to be silent sometimes. Don't just keep, keep telling God, talk, talk. but you have to be silent and then Holy Spirit will bring to your remembrance things which needs to be aligned. So let me move forward. So the sins of omission is what I want to. So let me put the first foundation here by telling that uh, actually Paul addresses this little bit, uh, not little bit, he addresses in a very good way in uh, Romans chapter 7 when Paul is talking about the problem of sin within us, the problem of sin within us. 
I'm going to read uh, quickly Romans 7 verses 14 to 20. If uh, Let me see what all I need to read. So the, the, the thing is, he says, so the trouble is not with the law for it is spiritual and good. The trouble is with me for I am all too human, a slave to sin. I don't really understand myself for I want to do what is right, but don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. But if I know that what I am doing is wrong, this shows that I agree that the law is good, so I am not the one doing wrong. It is a sin living in me that does it. And I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it in any way. But if I do what I don't want to do, I am not really the one doing the wrong. It is a sin living in me that does it. But Paul doesn't leave us there. Actually, he goes further and actually verse, um, you know, he, he further says, you know, for in my inner self I delight in God's law, but I see a different law in the parts of my body waging war against the law of my mind and take me prisoner to the law of sin in parts of my body. Then he says, what a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from the body of death? Then he says, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There is hope. There is victory through Jesus Christ. But Paul is actually telling the struggle in real sense that I want to do right. But what I do is, what I do? I do. I can't. Because there is sin. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. I'm not hearing any amen to that because you all are grown. <laughs> Looks like it's just my struggle and Paul's struggle. Right? No? Okay, I have one more person with me. So we three. Paul, me and brother Dan. It's three. Okay, we are good. <laughs> That's the reality. The sin... Wages struggle. There's a battle going on. And uh, why I brought this up is because we have to understand foundation of why, what is going on. So, but through Jesus Christ, we have victory. And chapter 8 actually talks about the life-giving spirit. I'm not going to get into that today because that will deviate us from what I'm uh, planning to tell you. But... I wanted to bring this up to say that even the super giant apostle Paul mentions about the struggle that because sin can create a lot of challenges in our daily walk with the Lord. The second portion I want to bring because I want to get to the practical side of things, why it's a problem. The second thing I want to bring to you is that famous story about the Good Samaritan. Right? Because now I'm going to uh, switch gears and come to the uh, Good Samaritan story, right? Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. But I want to read a few things because you all know about this story. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. Then what happens? By chance, a priest came along, but when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. A temple assistant walked by over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed by the other side. The third is, a despised Samaritan came along. When he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey, took him to an inn where he took care of him. The next day he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I will pay you the next time I am here. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by the bandits? Jesus asked. The man replied, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said, yes, now go and do the same. We all learned that story so many times. Um, the priest, the temple assistant, and a Samaritan. If you put three of them in a place and uh, ask who has the best chance to go to heaven, from a human perspective, what would people say? 
Huh? Who is the number one in that? Okay, let's, let me not talk about heaven. Let's say, let's say, who is the most spiritual person? The priest. And number two? Assistant. And number, th- I don't know even he will get a rank for number three because it says that he is a despised Samaritan. That's what he used, the despised Samaritan. But Jesus is asking them to do something which the priest did not do, the assistant did not do, but what the Samaritan did. Because Jesus says, now go and do the same. So what happens is, you know, I have, I have heard a lot of illustrations on this. So one, probably the reason was it was service time. Maybe the, the, the time for the priest to perform the duty was there. So that's why he, right? Or maybe the assistant had uh, to report at the time. Probably they, 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 they were more, more mindful about the, the rituals or the ceremonies which they were going to do or whatever they had to do. But the Samaritan did not have that kind of a issue. But anyway, we see that his heart was such that he did not go, he did not go through the other side of the road. He actually took the pain to care for this man. He could have said, okay, he's a Jew. He's a Jewish man. I'm a Samaritan. We have our own issues and problems. If it was a Samaritan man, I would have done something, right? We get into that mode where we like only some people and we don't like some people, which is absolutely wrong in the kingdom of God. Because there is going to be a time where book of Revelation says people from every nation, every tribe, every tongue, every language, we are going to be in the presence of the Lamb of God and we are going to sing and shout hallelujah. So at that time, if you are a person who have preferential things, sorry, that is not the place for you. Sometimes I feel so sorry when people use, even Christians, believers use words which are not that great for other people. If you are somebody like that, I ask you to repent. Because God created every man, like God created the humankind in his own image and nobody is to be despised or looked down. Everybody has been given equal value. In the sight of God, everybody has a value. And I tell you, if you use certain words to demean or say something about somebody, you will have to answer that. I'm serious. Seriously, I'm telling you. Because actually there are verses which actually talks about, um, you know, if you say silly and a lot of things, you know, it talks about judgment. So as children of God, we have to see people as God sees them and we have to, you know, address them in that way. So let me, let me come back. So the Samaritan, he does something beautiful. He doesn't ignore the need. He does, he goes to that extra level of taking care of this man who was in a desperate need. Let me move forward because I want to get to a few more things here. When you read the Bible, Bible gives us a lot of things which is related to the sin of commission and then Bible also asks us to do a lot of good things. So let me just say it this way if we can understand it better. There are negative things which Bible says don't do it. And then there are positive things which Bible tells do it. Again I repeat, there are positive things which Bible tells do it. And there are negative things which Bible says don't do it. And they are equally important. They are equally important. Let me read 1 John chapter 3 verses 17 and 18. It says, If someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need but shows no compassion, how can God's love be in that person? This is the word of God. It says, If you have enough money to live well but you see a brother or sister in need but shows no compassion, you are not moved at all, how can God's love be in you? Next verse says, dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. So Bible is actually advocating that 
children of god should be action oriented we should not be mere talkers or advisers and suggestions and all those stuff sometimes when i have this ministry meeting not i'm not talking about this church but in other context where i serve i say you i wish for every one who has good opinions and good things if we even had like for at least five good good people who will have a lot of ideas and all this if we had one person who will actually do it execute it because when it comes to execution we find a struggle to find people because you know people can sit in a meeting and say a lot of good things we will we will climb the himalaya mountain and bring down the tree from the himalayas and give it to everybody but yeah you don't need to go to himalaya just you know go to your neighborhood and climb a tree but well, you got what i'm saying <laughs> you don't have to do big gigantic things do little things that will make a big difference than you climbing the big mountains right but bible is very clear that um when we become more and more aligned with the will of god we will become more action oriented than you know talkative <laughs> we'll become more action oriented there is another uh, reference i want to bring to your attention is matthew 25 verses 44 to 45 you know that's a huge portion but i let me just bring uh, that few verses from there it says then they will reply lord when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and not help you and he will answer i tell you the truth when you refuse to help the least of these my brothers and sisters you're refusing to help me sometimes uh, i don't know about you but again this is not because of who i am but because of my role and the past of this church right i get so many messages from different places africa somebody wants to us to do a refugee visa for them or somebody wants uh, this help that help lot of things comes and i cannot actually deal with everything and sometimes i feel like lord am i ignoring things which i should not ignore so i'm i'm guilty of that sometimes so i don't know maybe there are some genuine but there are also a lot of uh, things which are not really genuine but my point here is we have to be um mindful about the fact that we don't become people who go through the other side of the street i'm not saying you all go through the other side of the street but if there is some areas in our life where we have a tendency to move over the other side we need to examine ourselves again this is not just in the matter of giving or helping or anything but even ignoring the basic things which the lord has asked us to do a lot of times as christians we get discomfortable or we are we have discomfort when we do we we do the sin of commission but uh, nothing happens in our deep inside of us when we are doing the sin of omission a lot of times by default we get disturbed and we get uh, restless when we do something which we know we should not be doing but a lot of times we don't think and one of the reason i tell you i don't know about your experience but i know as a fact that many times when we even read the bible we pay attention towards things which are forbidden but we don't pay that much attention to the things which are positive and which we need to do and a lot of times we dwell on only psalms 91 or psalms 23 you understand what i mean by psalms 91 and 23 because we want comfort yes we need comfort we are good with knowing that lord is our shepherd and we are happy to always read that uh, we are under the shelter of the almighty but as we mature and grow in our life we need to get to the real teachings of the bible and what jesus has taught us what the bible teaches us and while we stay under the shelter of our shepherd we need to move on and start doing things which the lord is asking us to do 
Now listen to me, if we ignore this, what are the consequences? I want to bring to you five things which I thought would be the consequences of intentional omission in our life. Number one, intentional omission is actually disobedience. Intentional om omission is disobedience. In 1 Samuel 15.22, we all know, it says, obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Samuel was addressing Saul. is very plain, very clean. He says, you know, because there are many Saul's, that there was one Saul over there, but there are many Saul who think that, okay, my disobedience can be covered by sacrifice. My disobedience can be covered by sacrifice. And a lot of times Christians are also like that. They think, oh, I come to the church or I, I, I say hallelujah, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, and my disobedience can be covered. But Bible fundamentally tells that God hates disobedience. He doesn't like that. He doesn't need our sacrifices. Yes, sacrifices are good, but he expects obedience from us. So intentional omission of things which God wants us to do or expects from us to do is actually a disobedience from our side. So we should be wary of that. Number two, omission leads to neglect which hinders the fulfillment of God's purpose and calling in our life. Listen to that very carefully. Listen to that very carefully. That's a very key thing I'm saying this morning. Omission leads to neglect, which hinders the fulfillment of God's purpose and calling in our life. If God wants you to move on with a purpose, and your calling in life. And if we neglect it, we don't pay attention to it, we ignore it. You know what is the consequences of that? The consequence is it is hindering the fulfillment and then you cannot blame God for that. A few weeks ago I spoke about how we need to be taking steps by faith when the Lord is leading us. Now, let me tell you, when we neglect and delay, 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 what is happening? Tell me what is happening when we delay. <laughs> when we delay, what happens? We are missing. We are missing. We are missing opportunities. We are missing chances. We are missing the purpose and plans of God in our life. We are missing our calling in sometimes. It can be a very serious consequence at some times. That's the reason, as children of God, we, have, we should not get into this habit of neglecting anything which God wants. Then we will not be able to fulfill our purpose and our calling in life. Very serious. You know, when I, when I was meditating and thinking about uh, um, this, uh, this is one thing which I, I, I felt very strongly in my own life that, no, I cannot neglect, I cannot skip, I cannot ignore. What I need to do today, I need to do today because otherwise I'm missing out something which the Lord has to do. Which the Lord has to do. How many stories we have heard when people obeyed. And even though they didn't want to obey. Have you heard come across that? Have you heard that story where. Uh, there are many stories like this. But one story uh, where. You know. God asks somebody to go and. Just. Uh, Go to one place and this person says, no, I'm not going to go. Like it's not in, 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 the, in the same city. There's this person says, no, 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 I'm not going to go, Lord. This is night and, you know, I'm not. But then somehow this person finally decides to go and goes to that place and finds that the person on the other side actually was about to commit suicide. And then this person goes and talks to that person and finally he confesses, rescues him. And then let's, this person's uh, issues and whatever challenges, they were, it was solved and goes on. But in that story, there are, there are many incidents like that. But in that story, if this person would have repeatedly ignored and did not take that action, he would have missed that beautiful, beautiful experience he had of rescuing somebody. 
omission leads to neglect which can hinder our the fulfillment of god's purpose and calling in our life let me tell you the third thing omission leads to missed divine appointments in our life omission can lead to missed divine appointments in life how many of you realize that christian life is supernatural you may say that oh my life is ordinary but let me tell you you being in faith is actually the mercy of god it's supernatural this whole thing is supernatural when i say supernatural don't think that you know something from heaven is falling no but we are in the plan of god we are in the in this in this in this great uh, plan of redemption and we are here for a purpose you know when you think the whole bi- biblical story from that perspective this is absolutely supernatural in many sense and we encounter divine appointments when somebody comes to faith do you think it's because of your ability no if we all apply the best business logic and the best business technique and try to do something ministry wise we will be a failure but we don't need any trick or any 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 big big principles what we need is the grace of god and the working of the holy spirit and that is what is accomplishing and furthering the kingdom of god and bringing people to his presence so that's supernatural and in that supernatural realm of things we encounter what is called as divine appointments on a daily basis on a weekly basis sometimes you know unexpectedly you have to go somewhere and you encounter somebody and you say a few words and then all of a sudden that results in something which is beyond what you thought do you think what it is you may think it's a coincidence no if you have committed your life into the hands of god and if you have said lord use me the way you want that's a divine appointment which god has given to you to be a blessing for somebody else I believe in that every time we should be open as children of God we should be open for God's divine appointments in our life sometimes it may not appear like that sometimes it may be a small thing but who knows that one thing or a small thing you do may be a life saver for many who knows who knows that one divine appointment you had in your life which rescued a young person will result in thousands of souls who knows because that young person could be used by the lord to bring thousands i believe in that even though i may not win thousands but i pray sometimes lord give me one who may win thousands because that's again a victory for that to happen we need divine appointments in our life and that will happen and that takes place every single day it's happening so many things are happening so many encounters are happening so many things i you know sometimes i am i i i i stand amazed by hearing things i stand amazed i'm not joking sometimes how god works some divine appointments i hear about how people were used by divine appointments i i just think oh this can only be possible this is only possible because god's hand was behind it and now let me come back to what i was trying to tell you you will miss divine appointments after divine appointments in your life if you skip or if you are you know uh, in in this habit of omissions in your life and that will be a great regret when when you realize it the fourth thing remember omissions have eternal consequences omissions have eternal consequences we need to be energetic we need to be enthusiastic we need to be on fire for the lord whatever we do we need to do it with full diligence yes we may not be able to do 10 things even if we do one thing do it with full diligence because things have eternal consequence our slackness should not deprive somebody the privilege of spending an eternity with god and if you ask is that possible yeah technically and you miss the blessings god can send somebody or use somebody else but we miss that great privilege there is one uh, thing about which bible tells us that heaven rejoices the whole heaven rejoices tell me what is that huh tell me 
when we when we come to the church heaven rejoices maybe but there is bible explicitly tells there is one thing when it happens the whole heaven rejoices tell me what what is that when a sinner repents the heaven rejoices now just imagine because of your diligence and uh, uh, not when i say diligence means we have to take our initiative and because of lack of neglect from our side lack of knowing going through the other side of the road if we are able to touch one person if we are able to make break a impact in one person's life who will give their life to jesus heaven rejoices over it what a privilege it is what a privilege it is i tell you your 10000 dollar cannot make the heaven rejoice but somebody being touched by the power of jesus is going to make heaven rejoice hallelujah and that can only happen if we are mindful about the fact that our actions in this world have eternal consequences eternal consequences finally let me tell you that the fifth thing i want to remind you is if we end up not helping people in need as we read earlier in the from the bible what is happening is we are missing the fundamental teachings and then we are missing that opportunity and people are missing as i said earlier lot of words is not going to help anybody little actions and little deeds are going to really help people lot of words are not going to help anybody yes it may it may make them feel good there was a, there was this one person you know uh, somebody was telling me that uh, every time he sees somebody he will make lot of promises he will tell you know we will do this we will do that and i will do this i will do this 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 and people are all very happy about it and uh, later he never does anything false hope he would say okay i i'm going to pay i will i will i will give you i will support you just this 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 but he never turns back or does anything so he may promise 10000 but he is not doing zero but there is another person who may not promise 10000 but just give 10 just give 10 that's it who is a better place <laughs> let's make sure that the channel of blessing which god makes us we really become a channel of blessing i'll repeat that five things intentional obedience uh, intentional omission is a disobedience and god is happy with our obedience than our sacrifices you know obedience is better than sacrifices we should not skip sacrifice but omission leads to neglect which hinders the fulfillment of god's purpose and his calling in our life omission leads to missed divine appointments omission has eternal consequences and omission is actually stopping uh, somebody or it's preventing somebody from getting a help and that god wants to make us a channel of blessing and uh, many times uh, we don't become that because we have a lot of words and very less actions let me conclude by telling you what should be our attitude when we read the bible this is fundamental as i said earlier look for both what god is asking us not to do and what is asking us to do and i don't know your experience but from my default experience and from what i have spoken to many people or some people what i have realized is many times we are more we, are, we underline things we should not do but we don't underline things we should do if you are a somebody like me who marks the bible with a, you know highlighter or anything have two colors of highlighter maybe a red one or a little bit darker one and uh, when you, when something says don't do just mark it and when something positive is there mark it with green i do that mark it with green color and come back and look at all the greens you have marked right have that attitude when you are looking when god says do something pray for the harvest you know he says pray that the laborers will be sent for the harvest jesus said right pray pray right mark it and then don't leave it there write it down if you are not doing it write it down how many of you sit with the diary or some notepad or something when you read the bible if you don't do that i tell you you are missing start doing it if there is an action item write it down okay Bible says 
I need to do this, but I don't do this. Action item. Right? Action. Write it down. Or add it to your prayer list or wherever it is. Action item. And then take action on it and start doing it. Take action on it. Don't just... So three steps. Number one, when you read, if you, if you mark, it's okay. But if you feel like, okay, this is something which I need to do. I need to start doing it. Okay, I'm not doing it. Write it down. Write it down. I have a diary. I have a diary. Write it down. Or make a notepad. Write it down. And then, once you're done with everything, take an action item. Okay, this week I'm going to at least do it once. Right? You, 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 you saw that God says, the Bible says, you know, uh, provide uh, food. Right? It's not exactly like that, but there are a lot of verses which says, okay, this week what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go out and look for one person, one person, maybe buy a pizza or something. I will do something, something simple. I'm not going to claim, claim that I'm going to do like, you know, $1,000 worth of something or I'm going to donate this. No, I'm going to do something, something simple. Something small I will do. When you do that, that's where the plan of God and the divine provisions and the divine appointments all will start opening up in front of you. All will start opening in front of you. May the Lord help you. May the Lord guide you. The whole point is let us become very practical, real, serious. Let's not continue to hear and hear and hear. One thing which the Lord actually, I don't know whether I'm doing this or not, you all know. But one thing, one thing the Lord has put in my mind is don't make it complicated. Don't make it complex because I'm looking for simple things. That's why I try to now say simple, simple things so that we can actually get to the reality of the matter, not understand everything and then walk with all this knowledge which is beyond even our understanding. But let's come to the reality of the word and let us be very simple in our approach to the Lord. And when the Lord tells us something, let's, let's make it a note and let's try to do it. I'm not trying to say that we will all be able to do everything, but when we read the Bible, let the Bible not be read for the formality or for the sake of reading. Even if you read a little bit, let there be a genuine desire to be transformed by the living word of God. And when that happens, we are going to really see that the fruitfulness in our life is going to increase. Because that's when we are going to dwell in him. Because his words are going to really take root in our life. And that's where the fruitfulness will start appearing in our life. That's where even without anybody knowing, we are going to encounter in our own lives that something is changing. It's not because you have the ability or the power. It's because you have started taking the word of God seriously. And it has started taking root. And it is not only staying inside of you, but it is coming out as an action in your life. And when you do that, that's where the fruit fullness comes out of your life don't ignore omissions in our life let me conclude by and then I'm going to pray there's a quote I got from uh, his name is Abraham Verges uh, there is a book called as cutting for stone he says not only our actions but also our omissions become our destiny not only our actions but also our omissions become our destiny let's close our eyes let's pray